All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. And shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. And as you see, the devil being the devil. And another thing, too. The scriptures is playing out the way that the scriptures is playing out. The way that the Lord put the spirit on the prophets to write down these scriptures, man, it's literally playing out. So all you people out there that's playing games, thinking that it's a game. Salvation is near. And before salvation come, destruction. Have to happen. But as you see this title, and I'm pretty sure y'all heard about this. You know, over the months, especially with this devil, you know, you've all know Harari. But um, quick, quick statement, you know, as I read this, I just love it. I love it because, like I said, the scriptures is playing out. The devil is playing his role to a T. All right. And, you know. It's just beautiful that the Lord gave the men of the Lord the eye salve, the vision, the prophecies, and the Holy Spirit, man. So anyways, it says World Economic Forum declares Jesus is fake news and God is dead. This is what you call blasphemy as the scriptures foretold that this man would be this way. So I'm going to read this article real quick and then get some scriptures. Lord willing to be edifying. So it says humans. I know you heard this are hackable animals without souls. According to Klaus Schwab in the World Economic Forum, Lord willing, this um, video don't get, you know, flagged. I'm going to try to speak in code to the best of my ability. That is not my strong point. I tell you that who have also declared that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say Jesus is the original fake news. The, D, the uh, WEF leaders are acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. See, this man really is trying to be God. And the beautiful thing, like I'm going to continue to reiterate, the scriptures is playing out. The Lord foretold what this devil was going to do and say. And the Lord is a hundred steps ahead of the game. So. It says, according to the World Economic Forum, a new one world religion has arrived and it is it and it unites all of humanity and worshiping at the altar, which means that you're going to have to, you know, make a pledge. You're going to have to bow down to that karagma. All right. So it says that worshiping at the altar of climate science, techno communism and Eugene X. It said, God, Jesus and Christianity is fake news that must be dismissed by humanity. And the thing is, this this article is not fake. This literally came out of his mouth and they is speaking proudly. You want to know another thing, too? Don't you realize how proud they've been speaking ever since they got the snake oil and all these people? They just been boasting, talking about people can be hacked. So you got to ask yourself. What was we know I'm just speaking, you know, facetiously right now. What was in those injections? Hmm. But anyways, um, is it if you find it hard to believe Klaus Schwab or Economic Forum would go this far? You clearly haven't been paying attention. That's right. To develop to developments in recent times, the blasphemy doesn't stop there. Klaus Schwab, right hand man, you've all know Harari has announced that the WEF has been successful in its plans that would turn humans into gods. Yep. Which is, you know, false hope, which is their pseudoscience, which is he calls them all and he deceive of them that take up the mark, right? Because it sounds good. Shit, nobody wants to die. But you're going to try to take like, look at it from this. Let's, 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 let's use some logic real quick. So you're going to tell me that a man. Just out of the blue, all of a sudden, right, know how to make a man not die. 
All the thousands of years that men been on the earth, not millions and billions like the scientists say, according to the scriptures, about 12,000 years. So anyway, so the 12,000 years that men been on the earth, you're going to tell me that over the over the years just now, somebody found a, I don't know, a loophole into immortality. This nigga is tripping. All right. But a lot of people going to fall for it because as I say in Daniel's 12 and 4, uh, people should run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. All right. The Lord, like I said, the word is just playing out. So let's get some scriptures. And the one that caught my eye, the first scripture that came in my head was um this. This is why Esau Edom have to go. This is why he the only one that can actually do this sin. This is why he is foretold not to make it. All right, I'm going to get that scripture next. And it says, wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be given unto men. This is the sin that only Esau, Edom can, can do. Matter of fact, I ain't going to say he the only one that can do it. He's the only one that's foretold to do it. Because even when you go into the kingdom of heaven, this is the only nation that's not going to receive mercy. All right. So even the other nations is going to receive mercy after the thousand years of getting they back whip. All right. And I just use that term because, you know, it's going to be way worse than that. The scripture said, you know, they, it's going to be double unto them for what they've done to us. But point that I'm making is that. Even uh, Israelites that's going to take the MOTB, they still going to come back in the kingdom through the elect, but they're going to be ranked very low. And I always say this to myself, man, I really hope that I'm part of the elect, just like every other man of the Lord do, because I look at it like this. If you if, if you're not part of the elect, the Lord is not effing with you right now. The Lord is he, he's disgusted at you and you're going to get the same fate as Esau. But the only difference is that you're going to be able to come back in the kingdom as a newborn baby. As a children of the elect, you know, but. You're still going, as I said, um, the greatest and the least in the kingdom. I don't want to be the least in the kingdom, man. But anyways, get back to this devil. So verse 32, and whosoever speak of a word against the son of man, it should be forgiven him. But whosoever speak it against the Holy Spirit, saying that it ain't no Jesus and it ain't no God and it's fake news and ain't no such thing. Because you got to understand the Holy Spirit is, is in everything, right? So when he's saying that there's no Jesus and there's no God and that's fake news and that's fairy tale. He basically saying like the world that you see is fake. The earth, the soil that you stepping on is fake. All of this just came out of nowhere. So when you blast me, the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit in John 14 and 26, it said the uh, the, you will understand all things, which means that it's all knowledge. Everything that you see is the Holy Spirit. Because guess what? Through the Holy Spirit which is what made everything you got to understand that even the wicked was made out of it. Remember Esau came from Isaac. All right. Which is your shy, but that's a whole nother lesson. All right. So the point is, is that through the Holy spirit, the Lord have created everything. And when you say that it ain't no God and it ain't no Jesus and that's fake news and all this shit is fake. That's what you're doing. So it says, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither this world, neither in the world to come. So this is how you know that it ain't talking about, you know, taking the karagma. That's not the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And this is how you know that it ain't talking about anybody but Esau Edom. Because he's the only one that's not going to receive mercy in this world, in the world to come, which is the kingdom. Now. Let's get the famous scripture that actually got my video strike one time. I was like, ain't this a bitch? It said in the house of Jacob shall be a fire in the house of Joseph a flame, which means he's going to bring the tribes together to get on your ass, Esau. And it said in the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there should not be any remaining of the house of Esau for Yahweh have spoken it. All right. I ain't going to speak on it no more because I want my video to stay up. So real quick, going back to the article, 
So this man, he's speaking very great words. He's speaking very, very proudly. And this is why when it really comes down to um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, goodness gracious, that chapter goes in. All right, because it's revealing the son of perdition, and it's telling him what he's going to do. But I'm just going to get one scripture out of 2 Thessalonians 2, just to prove the point of this. World Economic Forum declared Jesus is fake news and God is dead. So what is, he, what is he trying to do? This is what he's trying to do. Oops. Who opposeth, all right? So that means that he is against and exalted himself above all that is called God. So like he said, Jesus is fake. So if Jesus is fake and God is dead, then who is God? He's declaring that he is God. That's why he's saying that he could create immortality. Come on, man. This scripture right here is playing out. The whole chapter is dynamite, but I just want to, you know, get straight to the point and not make the video long. And it says, exalt himself above all that is called the Most High or that is worshipped so that he as the Most High instead of in the temple of the Most High show himself that he is the Most High, man. Come on. Come on, man. You telling me that's not what he's saying right now? Then when you read the article like I read, he basically saying that I can, I can give humans, I could turn humans into gods when the scriptures say that he's going to turn us into gods. When you go to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 50 on down, it talks about how we're going to be changed in a twinkle of an eye and this corruptible is going to put on incorruption and this mortal is going to put on immortality. He's saying he could do this with his technology. All right. So let's go to the famous chapter and I don't even got to get the Karagma scriptures because I'm just wanted to just talk about um this man speaking great words and blasphemy as the scriptures foretold. All right. And, I, and another thing, too, when it comes to this word, this is all I got. I'm very passionate about it. So if anybody, you know, who don't know me and might even come across my video, I'm talking about you new people. You know, you got to understand, man, this is my life. I'm very passionate about it. And, you know, and this is just my personality. So I don't know how you might take you might take it as proud. You might take it as this dude is, is you think is a joke because, you know, I, I, I mix a little comedy in with this because you have to or you'll turn you'll go crazy. All right. And I cuss a lot. All right. So I had to put that out there. So they say and they worship the dragon. All right. The dragon is talking about the Roman Empire which this is the Roman Empire all over again. That's why you got something called the Renaissance era. And then when you go into the book of Daniel, it talks about the little horn that came out of the beast. All right. Which is America today, which is Babylon, the great in scriptures. And it's saying they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast, who is able to make more with him. That's why he's able to say these proud things too, because he's been ruling and dominating the world since the lord allowed this man to come into power as it's saying Jer I'm jeremiah 51 and 7 babylon have been a golden cup in my hand all right so the lord is the one that made this kingdom great but he actually think that he done this on his own that is the pride of his heart have deceived him and he's in for a rude awakening too and it's saying there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies like this article right here. And it said, and there was given to him a mouth speaking great things, blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And when you do the math, that's 350 years from the time that Judah was over or being brought over here all the way up into now, really all the way up into 1970 when Abba, uh, Elder Abba Bivens came on the scene and that's how through him, and other men, which is our apostles, elders, you know, that's how they got the truth. So from that time that the word came out, this place been going down. All right. So that's what the 40 and two months is talking about. That's three and a half years going to 350 years, 1619, 1969, 1970, whatever one you want to say. All right. 
And it's actually in Obadiah too. Say when you go reach up to the heavens, then your kingdom will come down. And then I think in 1969, Apollo 10, so-called went into the moon. But anyways, let me continue. And it says, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the most high to blaspheme his name. Yeah, Jesus is fake. God is dead. And to in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. That's why he called the angels little Little gray men, little green men with big ass head and dark eyes. And then they want to call the chariots of the Lord uh, UFOs. They try to make it sound. Oh, don't don't forget about E.T. And then then he then he's saying they ain't even real. So the Lord is fake. Aliens is real. That's what you call blaspheming. Even them. You know, the tabernacle is where the Lord dwell. You know, and them that dwell in heaven, which is the angels. And guess what? We are actually the tabernacle of the Lord, too, because as it's saying, first Corinthians three and 18. That the Lord dwelleth inside us, we are the Lord's temple. All right. And what they call us black, Latino, Native Americans. So it says, and he shall speak great words against the most high and he shall wear out the saints and he wearing out this. He been wearing out the saints ever since he got his hands on us. But that's why Zechariah two and eight talks about he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. He gonna have to pay. Then when you go to Zechariah one and 15, said that the Lord was a little displeased, but he helped for the affliction. So this man been wearing us out. And when you go into the word wearing out, it talks about how he basically harasses us all right he just he's he never let up all these damn rules that he make these laws that he make the foods that we consumed like everything that he do he wears us out now he about to come down with that great wrath because he know he had but a short time and it said and, and to think to change times and laws yeah like it wasn't no such thing as 12 o'clock eight o'clock you know what i'm saying one no such thing as january february march april all right it was day one day two first watch second watch third watch things like that so this man thought he thinks to change times and laws and they should be given unto his hands see the lord gave it to him to do these things until the time times and dividing of times all right going back into you know that man now in this scripture is it's still playing out, right? So it, this is just a period of time. And, you know, this devil, I just can't wait till he go. Matter of fact, let me end it on this. This is the mind of the men of the Lord. This is what you call, well, uh, mark them who sigh and cry for the abomination thereof. So say, oh, most high, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever. Like, come on, Lord. Why withdrawest thou thy hand? Who sit on the right hand of the Most High? Yahweh Even your right hand, pluck it out of your bosom. Let Yahweh go. All right. Let Yahweh destroy these fucking pale people, man. Because they got to go. You see the things that they're saying? And you never seen, see, now, of course, they always spoke like this. They always spoke like this. But now we got the Internet and now we're at the end. So the devil just showing his horns even more. He's about to come down with that draconian laws, as I say in Revelation 13 and 11. Said he had, he had um, horns like a lamb. All right. Matter of fact. Haven't read that in a while. So it said, and I beheld another beast come out of the earth. All right. Talking about Babylon the Great. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. This is what you call speaking as a dragon. All right. And when you go into the word dragon, it's draconian. All right. And that actually was a real man. He was a Athenian lawgiver and it was real harsh. Talk about the, the, the least of charges would get you 
some serious trouble. All right. And that's what's coming to the earth. All right. So this man, he used to come and try to, you know, um, deceive you into getting you to believe that he is a lamb, that he is humble, that he's coming in your best interest. Now he's telling you, God ain't real. I'm God. And what you going to do about it? And you going to take my technology. And if you don't take my technology, you ain't going to buy and sell. Revelation 13, 16, 17. All right. So, you know, it is what it is, man. This is why we need the Lord. And the beautiful thing about it is that we know that the Lord is coming back. The word is playing out. It's very blatant to see. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Shalom.